Welcome back everyone to another video. Today we want to talk about the topic how to get around Sri Lanka. When we were looking up the transportation options in Sri Lanka it was very difficult. There were hardly any information how you can get around the country. So this is today's topic. We will tell you exactly what to do since we stayed in Sri Lanka for one month and now we really know how to get around. There are several transportation modes in Sri Lanka which you can choose from and option one is rent your own tuk-tuk. Renting your own tuk-tuk in Sri Lanka is very easy because there are several providers on the internet you can choose from. The big disadvantage is the price tag. It's by far the most expensive way in Sri Lanka to travel and you will pay around 16 to 18 euros a day plus fuel. The biggest advantage of the tuk-tuk is you are free to choose from whenever you stop, where you stop, which route you take and whenever you are wanting to drive or not. Option two is the public transportation, naming the bus and the train. From the most expensive way to travel in Sri Lanka, we are now going to the most affordable way, which is the bus and the train. The buses are running very regularly in Sri Lanka and it is probably the most ideal way to travel in Sri Lanka for a journey of up to two hours. However, be aware that Google Maps sometimes shows the longer routes or the wrong routes, so the best way to find out where to go and when to go is just to go to the next bus stop and ask the locals, which are really helpful and will glad to guide you to your right bus. For longer routes, we can really recommend taking the bus since it gets very crowded and especially on the weekends or even on holidays or in the afternoon. It gets very crowded, there are so many people and that is just not comfortable if you are a traveler, especially if you have a backpack or a suitcase. So how does traveling with a bus work? You just go to the bus, you leave your baggage in the front at the driver and then you take your seat. The stuff of the bus will then come to you and you will then pay for your ticket when you are already sitting in your seat. For longer journeys we recommend booking a train ticket like going to Ella, to Kandy, these are routes you can do by the train very easily and which we did as well. For long distances we highly recommend to book a train ticket with seat reservation. There are the options to book train tickets without seat reservation which is second class and third class and then there are seat reservations for first and second class. The compartments are so cramped up and so tight, so many people are on the train especially on weekends and holidays that even on our way to Kandy, there was a woman who fainted in the compartment because it was so tight. We highly recommend booking a train ticket with a seat reservation, especially maybe the first class because it has air conditioning, it's like an airplane seat, it's very comfortable and it's a very pleasant experience to travel this way. Option number three is driving with a Pygmy or an Uber. We always use the app Pygmy in cities like Kandy or Colombo. However, Pygmy doesn't work in every location in Sri Lanka. In some locations it works pretty well and in others it really doesn't at all. The app works really easy. You just choose the route you want to take, then a pygmy driver picks you up and brings you to the location you want to go. You can even choose rides with multiple stops. Sometimes we were facing some issues. For example, pygmy drivers didn't pick us up or they didn't want us to pay in the app, they just asked us to pay privately. Therefore we can say that Pygmy in comparison to other apps we used in Asia before works only limited. Option 4 is a private tuk-tuk ride. An alternative to the transportation app is just taking the normal tuk-tuk or the taxis and you will find the guys who will ask you Hey boss, do you need a tuk-tuk? They will be everywhere. It's important to negotiate the price because you will get a higher rate because you're a tourist. There are some scams with the tuk-tuk drivers which you need to be beware of. First, they will drive extra long ways so they can bank more kilometers on the meter driving. Second, they will ask for more money at the end destination so make sure you agree on the money before you get into the tuk-tuk. And third, just check on the map which way the tuk-tuk driver is driving because you never know. Our recommendation for your Sri Lanka travel is to rent your own tuk-tuk. The next time we are going to Sri Lanka, we will rent our own tuk-tuk for sure. Even if it is more expensive, you can save a lot of time and frustration while getting around in Sri Lanka. So we will definitely rent a tuk-tuk on our next travel there. And this is our recommendation for you guys. There were many times where we were a little bit frustrated that we had no tuk-tuk because we couldn't stop along the way and there are famous streets. To Ella, there is a street where 
where elephants are going on the highway and we wish we could have seen this. Of course you can rent your own scooter in the cities that you visit and then drive around and explore. This is something we did in Ella for example. However, overall to see more and to be more comfortable with your luggage and so on, it is definitely better to rent your own tuk-tuk in our opinion. Absolutely, especially because the scooter is almost like 7 euros a day plus gas and if you're two people you can just split for the tuk-tuk and it will be almost the same and much more comfortable because the tuk-tuk is much bigger as you think. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you want any more information please leave a comment down below. If you don't want to miss our next video please leave a subscribe to our channel and also a like to the video and we will see you guys in the next episode. Bye bye!